November is looking like it's going to shape up to be a hell of a month in gaming. Hi folks, it's Falcon and today on Game Ranks, the games that deserve your attention in November 2020. Starting off at number 10, it is Destruction All-Stars, a brand new IP coming out on PlayStation 5. Destruction All-Stars is a vehicular combat game in which the point is to destroy the other vehicles, obviously. But once you lose your vehicle, you're just running around and have to defend yourself, which is, you know, human versus vehicles kind of a scary prospect. It is a hero-based game. Heroes have different vehicles. Vehicles have different abilities. Abilities range from attacks to defensive things like turning invisible or hacking, hijacking. And honestly, it looks like it could be a pretty unique title. I'm interested in how it turns out, of course. I do have the feeling it may actually be like something fairly different. It's a PlayStation 5 launch title, and if it turns out to be as cool as it sounds, it's definitely one of the things I'll be playing on November 12th. At number 9 is Godfall, or as I have called it in the past, Anthem with Swords. This is a game that could potentially be great, or it could potentially be, well, Anthem with Swords. I don't know. I am going to go ahead and say that like this game has to do a lot to prove itself to me personally, but I certainly understand why people are excited about it. It is a very pretty game. It's got a cool aesthetic. Also, melee combat is actually a lot of fun when done right. So for me, it's fairly easy to see why the potential is at least there. Counterplay Games, the developers have talked about how this is intended to be the tinkerer's dream. And what the developers mean by that is that the loot is going to actually be usable in a very customizable way. Honestly, these types of games as a service like have more to prove than faith I have to give in them immediately. But again, it could very well turn out quite well. My hopes are there at least. Godfall will be landing on PlayStation 5 and Microsoft Windows November 12th. At number 8 is Sackboy A Big Adventure, which is a part of the Little Big Planet series. There's a couple of changes here. We don't see the same kind of construction stuff that we did. It's also not 2.5D, it's fully 3D, and seems in some ways to me at least to be a little bit more of a traditional 3D platformer. However, it is also a couch co-op 3D platformer, which I really like the idea of. There is not enough of that. From what we've seen of the game, it looks very course-oriented, which I think is probably a very good thing. I prefer a course-oriented platformer to an incompetent collectathon. Obviously, Obviously, it's possible for a collectathon to be great, but it's also seemingly easier for them to screw it up. This looks more like along the lines of the more open areas in a Super Mario 3D land or 3D world, and I am extremely ready for it. It looks great. Sackboy A Big Adventure is coming to PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 November 12th. At number 7 is Dirt 5. It's actually the 8th Dirt game, and you probably can figure out just from the name what the point is. It's an off-road racing game. Now, in between Dirt 4 and Dirt 5, we had Dirt Rally 2.0, which gave us a more focused rally and rally cross experience. However, Dirt 5 brings us to the same kind of wide range of modes that we got in Dirt 4. We do have rally cross, but we also have stadium super trucks, off-road buggies, ice racing, etc. A lot of Dirt 5 staff comes to the project from Drive Club and Motorstorm, so I do have a bit of curiosity if those games may have some form of influence over this. Obviously, Dirt is a little bit more specific in its scope than Drive Club, but Dirt is also generally a pretty great series all around. Dirt 5 is hitting PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC November 6th, Xbox Series X November 10th, and PlayStation 5 on November 12th. At number six is Demon Souls, a remake of a game that has really needed a remake for a long time now. This game is both old and new, in my opinion. The stuff that we've seen that they have remade is just absolutely like over the top amazing looking. And being the game isn't like early 2000s, but rather late. It came out in 2009. So it's not like it's a 20 year old game that we're aching for in nostalgia. However, it is an 11 year old game we are aching for in nostalgia. It's one of those games that's kind of mythical in its reach. Demon Souls it kind of is the first in the Souls series, even though Dark Souls is kind of the official, like, full ownership version. Demon Souls is an amazing game, and it's got a lot of stuff that's very different about it, even from Dark Souls. And I'm really excited to see that stuff in incredible 
totally redone graphics. Demon's Souls is landing on PlayStation 5 on November 12th. And number five is Yakuza Like a Dragon, a reimagining kind of reboot of Yakuza, which uses a turn-based JRPG battle system. I'm really interested in where this game goes. I don't know if it's going to be the permanent style they make these games in, or if they end up making another series altogether. But I'm going to go ahead and say I think it looks cool, I think it sounds interesting, and it could turn out pretty great. It's landing on PC, PS4, Xbox One, X and Xbox Series X on November 10th. At number four is Assassin's Creed Valhalla, which is, of course, Viking Assassin's Creed. For me, this is a game that I think could potentially be really cool. It does give off some pretty serious God of War vibes in its look. However, I think there's probably going to be some marked differences. This is a game in which Vikings are taking over England. I mean, that is a very simplified version of what's going on. It is actually based on historical events, as Assassin's Creed games are wont to do. This one has kind of snuck up on me a little bit. Like, there's been some information, some trailers, and I don't know exactly what to expect. And I think that that's actually really refreshing, especially with Assassin's Creed, a series that's been going for so long. Especially knowing that Origins and Odyssey have been as good as they've been, knowing that they've spent several years working on Assassin's Creed Valhalla, I have pretty good expectations for this one. It's landing on PC, PS4, Xbox One, Xbox Series X, and Stadia on November 10th, and on PS5, November 12th. At number three is Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales, which is a continuation of the Spider-Man DLC, which features Miles Morales as a standalone game that's maybe not entirely as long as the original Spider-Man game. However, if you purchase it on the PS4, you'll get a free upgrade to the PS5 version. And if you purchase the Ultimate Edition on PS5, you'll also get a remastered Spider-Man original and DLC version. Now, for me, I think that is a very worth it prospect. I like the idea of that very significantly. I like the idea of playing Spider-Man again with better graphics. Although, we can talk about the facial models in some other video, I assume. It's kind of weird to get used to one and then suddenly it's going to be a different one. I don't know. I don't really care that much, though. This one looks like it's going to actually have to deal with some different stuff because Miles's mom is running for office. And that's something you have to apparently balance supporting with fighting crime as a Spider-Man. And I think that that story is going to be fun. And plus, there's obviously more web slinging gameplay. When Marvel's Spider-Man, Miles Morales hits PS. PS5 and PlayStation 4 as well on November 12th. At number two is Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War, which I am pretty excited for. I mean, in some ways, it is a very controversial retelling of certain events, and maybe perhaps there might be plenty to discuss there. However, the era, the types of missions, and the stuff that I think we're going to be seeing, I think is a pretty good idea for a game. It's set during the early 1980s, and while I probably won't be taking the inspired by actual event stuff terribly seriously, I rarely do, and I'm not so certain that it's really worth it to get angry about. I have seen people angry about it, and in some respects, I even kind of agree with a lot of the people who are angry about historical accuracy. However, give me that Black Ops. These are good games. I'm also looking forward to Black Ops Cold War Zombies, which of course we'll be seeing plenty of as well. Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War is landing on PC, PS5, Xbox Series X, PlayStation 4, and Xbox One on November 13th. And finally, at number one is Cyberpunk 2077. I am so ready for Cyberpunk 2077. The delays have actually functioned to make me more excited for the game. I prefer it when delays happen instead of don't, when it's the thing that they need to do. And I think CD Projekt Red is the type of company that would delay the project because they think the project will end up better, rather than push out something that we don't want, which is exactly what I want. Delays do a good job of of assuring me as to the quality of something. It's gonna be the best Cyberpunk 2077 that it could be, and that's got me very excited because it's probably the coolest looking game. Add that into the fact that I'm a huge Witcher 3 fan, CD Projekt Red is just incredibly good at what they do, and of course we know what I'm going to be doing when Cyberpunk 2077 hits PC, PS4, Xbox One, and Stadia November 19th. A couple of quick bonuses for you. First is The Pathless, which is a very cool looking action adventure game where you play as an archer who is fighting to return lights to the world and defeat various spirits. 
That's coming to PC, PS5, and PS4 on November 12th. And we're also seeing a remaster of Need for Speed Hot Pursuit, which is, let's just be frank, one of the better Need for Speed titles. I love Hot Pursuit. It's such a great idea for a game, and I'm very much there for a remaster. It's been 10 years, and Hot Pursuit is just still fun as hell. That's landing on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, November 6th.